and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. This is going to be a little different because now I'm going to interview somebody who's in the same industry and could probably out-talk me. With me is Tony Solomon, <laughs> Full House Entertainment, and you're the CEO. That's correct. Okay. What is Full House Entertainment? Full House Entertainment is an enterprise that consists of three prongs of music, mostly. Um, one of the prongs that we have is our main thrust, which is um, providing entertainment to the public market. Um, corporate as well, uh, but they're kind of one and the same. So we have 35 DJs, 26 live bands, and the, um, the offshoot enhancements. So that means that you can not only get your DJ, which is a performance DJ. So I, I don't really perf um, compete with DJs as much right? because I... I'm a music teacher as well, which is another one of the a segue into my second prong. But the um, DJs that we have, a good 40% of them actually can sing at your wedding. They can actually play guitar and play piano. All these things that a lot of people don't realize are available uh, because they're largely not. Our company handles that. How long have you been doing this? 27 years, but 32 years DJ. Okay. So do you know Harry Gilbert? Of course I do. Harry and I work together. He's over in New Zealand now. Yeah. Yes. So he and I hope did, I'm happy for him. He did, because I had so many weddings, he did my wedding, my oh, second beautiful. wedding. Oh, beautiful. And <clears throat> you probably don't understand how important it is to have a performing DJ. 100%. Okay. He had everybody up. He, Dancers, everything. He has it all. He had that, them. He was just amazing, and yeah. I still talk to him. For sure. Okay, um, and he's been on with me before he left for New Zealand, um, and it, just a great guy. But the professionalism from a DJ mm -hmm. to a performing DJ is very, very different. It's very different, and that's what I try to express to people when they in social media you'll see um, any person say, "Hey, do you know of a good DJ?" And to me, that falls almost flat for me because I'm thinking they're thinking about the button pusher that mixes a beat from another beat and, and then says, come on in, uh, Mr. and Mrs., whatever it is. Right. That pales, as you just expressed, to the difference between a person that's going to dedicate the first dance by singing it or by playing the, the cocktail hour on piano. And they also come out with uh, they come out with assistance and uh, for I sure mean, tech, it's, it's, tech it's actually yep. a show right for sure more than for sure. Uh, you know okay so that's one prong of what you do yes what's the second prong Mr. Music the, Teacher yes the second one is that I have um, a, a, a boutique uh, music academy called Full House St Sound and Stage Studios and the difference between us and the piano teacher or the piano even the music school locally is that we teach. Um, modern methods using modern equipment so if a student be be it a person from the age of three to 89 i don't deal with two-year-olds and i don't deal with 90 year olds oh, I, I have I a problem with time. them yeah i just <laughs> <laughs> i got a little time it's not an, much it's i better, an inside I better figure it out <laughs> for sure yeah for sure and the thing is is that we um we do things that are a little bit zag for from most people zig we teach um your traditional sight reading and that kind of thing but at a minimum, because um, I find that it's easier to get music the way that music is. Um, it's easier to give music the way that you get music. And with a piece of uh, uh, sheet music, it, it took a while for me to say it because I use it so little. <laughs> but uh, you, you're relegated to playing what's on paper. And right. whereas nowadays, that was great when I was a kid and when I took lessons, you know, as a youngster. That's great. And it's still great now. But you have to put it in perspective because now we have things that weren't around in the 70s when I started, we're, like YouTube, where songs come out every minute. There's, there's so much content, and I like to teach my students the music they want to learn, not the red book from whoever, Thompson or whoever it is. I like to teach them beyond that. I like to teach them where I, they can do what I do and have my Jedi mind power, where I can take a song that I hear and play it almost identical to what I heard. And then if I want to, I can embellish it and put my little Wayne uh, uh, DNA in there, you know? <laughs> and I get that because sure. you came in here a couple of minutes ago. I knew this much about what you do, and I didn't script anything. I love that. Okay. No sheet music here. <laughs> We're just Exactly. Yeah. So that's one part of 
what I so agree on what you do. The other part is, you're right, because back then, now, if you have an organ, it's got eight million things that it does, not just one thing. Right. Okay? And you're right. What you do is you open someone's mind to more than just what's on that sheet. Of For music. sure. And that's how music is made and should be made. For sure. And and the thing is, is that even even after college, my research showed, my self-research showed me that a good 60% of whoever we call a popular art, artist, they read no more than chord charts. Your, your Adam Levines and your people that were popular or are popular now, they know music, but they don't need the... The, 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 yeah, they don't need it to be scripted. And the thing is, is that I think that people that play music should also be creators of music. You're using the same tools as the guy that wrote that song that you want to learn how to play, whether it be a, um, a six-year-old girl that wants to do Let It Go from uh, Disney's Frozen or whatever it is. She, the same beautiful sound that she heard and wants to duplicate, she can kind of write that with, with my assistance in the way that my methodology I teach chromatics, and that means that um, I, I'm a, a strong student of Bobby McFerrin, and people don't know him for anything other than be Don't happy. Worry, Be Happy. But the guy is um, a, doctor in, a doctor in music, and he can show you how a propeller head can know the pen pentagonic, uh, the, uh, the uh, ability to pick up the next note or make that note match with the next chord. So that way you have the freedom of a whole nother world of creativity as opposed to just being able to recreate what you saw on paper. You know, it's so interesting because it so crosses over into what I do because I, we discuss really nothing and my mind listens to what you say and I'm already on the next note. For sure. Okay? For sure. And that opens up the ability to do whatever we want to do and, and have a good time doing it. Exactly. And not always knowing exactly where it's going to go. But That's no a one, good part. That's the fun right. part. It's an adventure, isn't it? Right. And I love that. And I've learned so, I mean, I've done over 70,000 of these. Beautiful. And I've learned them. I have a little bit of knowledge about everything. What instruments do you play? So I'm glad you asked. So what we teach, I play, my, my, um, my prime instruments would be keyboard slash uh, synthesizer. Not really a piano guy. It's a difference. The, the beast is more organic. I'm into the electronic portion of it, but it translates. So I would say that is my number one instrument, and then also play drums, percussion, and vocals. So what we teach, the thing is, is that I am a, a mirror to everything that I do. Anything I do vocationally is, uh, and commercially, I sell that knowledge to my students, uh, whether it be, uh, this is what we do at Full House Stage and Sound. We do um, keyboards, we do drums, we do guitar, we do vocals, we do DJ camp, which teaches you how to work a controller so you can learn how to DJ. And a lot of the DJs that I teach, I actually hire. Same thing with vocalists. Right. A lot of them work on our staff. And then on top of that, we teach composition, which is another segue into my third prong. Composition and recording and production. So that way we can actually make it so that you can learn how to not only play that piece, write that piece which is the composition portion, but actually record that and make it so that it's ready for Spotify or Apple TV. I, I, I'm so upset that my parents didn't push me to the keyboard. It was something that I look back and say, man, I think out of every instrument, probably one of the best instruments to know, mm -hmm. at least as a starting point. I uh, agree. Um, now, today, being older than dirt like I am, I like the sound of steel drums. Okay. I love the sound of steel drums. For sure, me too. But I'm again, relaxing. I'm a big, I'm a parrot head, so I'm a big Buffett fan. I that love island too. music and yes, stuff. Sure. So you hear it all the time. Trop rock. And trop rock. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for me, I like all kind, almost, almost all kinds of music. Understood. Um, and I've been around the entertainment industry, again, for 35 years now, and I've learned things that I got to use. Like, I learned about performing DJs and not just a DJ that's going to stand there and do this and do this and scratch records. For sure. Okay? Um, and I hung out with some cool people. Um, I was in Live in Miami with LMFAO. Sure. So I was on stage with them. Understood. And Very I, cool. I actually have a video of him 
coming like right up to my camera, sticking Red his face. Yeah, co- sticking his face right in my camera. Photo, photo, yep, yeah, photo bombing you. Yeah. So, um, it's a great industry to be in. Not an easy industry to be in. People think it's. It's all but, fun and games. Yeah, it's until not. you chip the chrome. Okay, right. <laughs> okay, it, it's it's a tough industry, and I don't want to use the word, but it's an industry that has a lot of downfall, and you have to be so so careful when you're in this industry. But it's an industry that becomes so enjoyable when you learn to avoid the pitfalls. For sure. Okay. For sure. So, what's the third? Piece. The third piece is actually the one that I'm most I'm most passionate about. Um, in time, in my bucket list, I would almost sacrifice the other two prongs to be in the last one. And the last one is film scoring. Um, in this area, because of the fact that what we is don't, it? exactly that's what I was going to say. In this area, because of the fact that we don't have um, access or exposure to um, much as far as the industry is concerned when it comes to film and the marriage of film and music, people think that when I say I'm a film score, um, that that means I'm the one that does rotten apples um, and says that was an 80% uh, rotten tomato. Rotten tomato, I'm sorry, rotten tomato, which is a rotten apple to me. (laughs) It's not always right. But at any rate, though, people say, so you basically rank movies, right? That's what you do, right? You're a film score. You, You tell us what to watch. And I was like, no. Actually, what I do is I do really... Um, interesting music that fits the the um, fits the um, the narrative of the vision of what you see. It's the bed underneath it. So I'm the. If you think of John Williams, which so it's is like, usually dun, 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 dun. okay uh, in like, 1985. Yep, that's what it was. I'm old. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm old. But basically, you bring life to exactly. what's happening on the screen. I coined myself, and it's probably not original, but it's what fits what I think I do. I'm a sonic storyteller. So I kind of help the producer and direct, director get a point, get the get across the point of what they're trying to tell you is around the corner or this moment of gravitas. I'm going to I'm going to punctuate that for you sonically. And it's not always just through music. It's not always violins and trumpets and horns and and the, the typical instruments sometimes it's something like a brand where you know it's a big uh, thud you know that i need or a little ticky clock sound so it's, it's sound design do you think that you take the music end and the sound effect end and kind of blend I'm, them i blend them that's exactly what i do i have um expensive software programs that have nothing musical to do with anything and then on top of that you have the thing that's called foley um i don't do a lot of that but I love doing Foley because what is it, Foley? Foley is the, if we're quiet right now, which would be impossible. But we we, we can do it for a t- for for a pico second. Okay. If we're quiet, we hear sounds around us right now. Like I heard you breathe. I heard the air conditioner. I heard him moving his chair. The producer moving Stop his chair. Stop moving your chair. No, it's good. It's all good <laughs> stuff. The thing is, is that it adds realism to whatever it is, or actually, it adds above realism because a lot of times when you're watching a western and that wind's blowing. There are no gale forces, but it sounds like that when the tumbleweed goes across. In reality, if you were to go to the, the, mid, uh, the Midwest or out west, the tumbleweed moves. It really doesn't make that much of a sound. But on the movies, we make it sound more pronounced than what it is. So that way it makes it carry over through film. Which enhances the visuals. Completely. And you think it's real. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting because... When you go out to eat, you you visualize the food. Mm-hmm. That's how you begin to taste it. Sure. You take the smell of the food. Sure. It's not just the food. Exactly. In in video, because that's the industry I'm in, it's what happens behind the video. Or underneath it. Or underneath it. Simultaneously. Right. That kind of pulls you further in. Okay. And I guess the thing that everybody would... would kind of relate to is just think of any scary movie okay if that's it, my favorite genre by the way if they didn't you're, have you're psychic okay <laughs> if they didn't have that lead-in music sure. to what's going to happen the impact would not be there right the impact would not so be there. you and the director or producer are the one to punch you get yeah. it across by what you both do uh, together in tandem you know it makes it so that that made that scene and that's important to, to me and in, 
And what I do is I have to pay attention to the vision and detail of my producer so that way I can get that across. I have um, right now um, a, a, a small shrine of movies. Uh, I've done about 18 international movies through the help of friends um, and producers that have um, taken pity upon me for being a, a late bloomer. But okay. they, they know that I'm not just dedicated to the craft, but I'm I'm actually pretty good at it now. I couldn't say that maybe four years ago, but I kind of I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I started this in my mid to late thirties. I love this story. Okay, already. I love this story. I sold my car to have an electric skateboard scooter. Went ninety thousand dollars in credit card debt. This industry did not exist. Okay, everybody said, "Don't be stupid. Get a real job. This is a pipe dream." Not at all. Okay, I had the eviction notices. And just so you know, I could make a ton of money in real estate because that's where I made most sure. of my money. It's not about the money but all the time. But every time someone said, it's not going to work, it's not going to work, I stuck it out. And there was no, like today, everybody with a cell phone is a videographer, sure. a photographer, a producer, and a talk show host. Sure, sure. Okay. And there was no, just so you know, there was no Skype and Zoom. I was the pioneer for Skype and Zoom. Beautiful. Okay. And... I love the industry, I've, but I've seen some of the pitfalls and fell into some of those pitfalls. Sure, that's how we'll you get, learn. We're getting a tough time. How do people find you? you have a website? Well, they go to Full House Entertainment Co., which is short for company, fullhouseentertainmentco.com, and that'll give you a, a smattering of what we're able to do. Um, one of the things that I pride myself in is, is that our company zigs when everybody else is zagging. For example, we have um, an elephant because people are like, why would a DJ company or entertainment have an elephant? And I have to think to myself, why wouldn't you with all the Indian uh, in, uh, influences we have where that the thousand step uh, march for the wedding, the, for the, uh, the bride is on a bedazzled elephant. And then, and then I say, well, I have a tiger, too. Why do you have a tiger? I said, well, you, you ever heard of a quinceanera? I was just talk, talking to Freya about that, and they're like, why would you have it? I was like, well, when you have a, a quinceanera, some of the more elevated ones have photo opportunities with a tiger. I have a mermaid for pool parties where we actually put a, um, a movie-grade tail on a size one beautiful mo model. Shout out to Alexis. Ah. Um, and uh, and we put her Shameless in the pool. Plug. Yeah, we put her. Yeah, no, no, no shame at all. That's right. We put her in the pool for an hour, and she looks, sounds, and sings. One of my, she's one of my students. Oh, cool. And she'll sing like a mermaid and read mermaid stories. And that way, when uh, little Jennifer has another party she goes to, nobody can ever can compare to Jennifer's party because she had a full house entertainment party. Right. And it thought of those things. So we more than performance artists performance DJs and having um, st strictly enhancements like the cold sparks and the lights or whatever it is. Everybody's got that and anybody can buy that, but not any, not around here. We don't have the kind I of, um, yeah, the exposure to things that we do in Miami and New York and Atlanta um, as a tri-state company. Why I have cameras. I because you can use cell phones. That's what they think. Oh right, right, they right. Think, why sure. are you not using an uh, iPhone? There's a quality difference, no? Of course, there's a quality okay, difference. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. The size of the lens of an iPhone is this big. Right, it, right. It's that the same? Yeah. It's just never going to be the same. For sure. Um, I think. I probably won't be alive when it is. Might be the same, but right now it's not. But you have a phone number that people can reach you guys. Our phone number is seven seven two four eight five seventy two hundred. Thank you so much for Good coming to meet on. You, Wayne. Thank you so very much. Full House Entertainment, check them out. Guys, we'll be right back.